fired up about today's show because we have a man who has been fighting. He is fighting uh, for our American freedoms. You see, God gave humans dominion over the earth. The Dominion software machine did not give the satanic, Luciferian left dominion over America. And this man is fighting to make sure we have election integrity. Lynn Wood, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Well, thank you for having me, Clay. I'm a little tired, but I'm okay. You, sa- you, you sound great. And I, I'm so- I apologize if my intro wore you out a little bit. But uh, now we're talking about election fraud. Can you tell us what's going on with the election fraud and, and what your role has been in helping to stop it? Well, it's not as much to stop it, although we did try to stop a fraudulent recount in Georgia. It's been to expose it. I filed a lawsuit myself uh, 10 days or so ago uh, as a Georgia voter who voted in person to have declared unconstitutional and unlawful as a violation of equal protection. The fact that the Secretary of State of Georgia in a back room deal with the Democratic Party, mind you, the Secretary of State claims to be a Republican, cut a deal with Perkins Coie, also known as the Hillary Clinton law firm, Mm. where he changed the rules for the general election as it relates to absentee ballots. Part of the fraud plan was to do this mail-by, vote-by-mail scheme. So he makes this change, which makes it easier for fraud to occur on the absentee ballots, but he didn't take it to the legislature. A lot of the state legislators in Georgia didn't know about it until I filed the lawsuit. Under the law in this country, U.S. Supreme Court law, you cannot change the rules of a federal election except through the state legislature. So I filed that lawsuit. It's still pending, although we lost a temporary injunction effort to try to stop the the sham uh, recount that's underway, where they're just recounting the same fraudulent votes. And secondarily to that, I've been working with Sidney Powell, consulting with Sidney, and I've seen the evidence. I know how the more in other part of the fraud was perpetrated. It was through the computer voting system, primarily in America, the use of the Dominion voting machine. Mm. But the software that Dominion came packaged with was also in other voting machines designed to flip votes. People don't realize they voted in America. Their vote was in a machine created in Venezuela. It was used to keep Chavez in office, sold to Canada, and then connecting up with three other companies. Your vote went to Frankfurt and to Barcelona, where it was manipulated by software done by a company called SGO Smartmatic. Real quick, Lynn, I just want to make sure you might have to get out the sock puppets here. You're a smart man. You're an attorney, and I just want to make sure I'm getting this, okay? So... Uh, help me understand this. Step one, the Canadian-owned Dominion vote counting machines, they're used in 28 states. So we're using a Canadian-owned hardware voting machine in 28 U.S. Well, states. China hardware. And the China hardware. And then step two is Dominion, the, the hardware, that's got some China hardware in there. That gets its software for our U.S. elections, the software used to tabulate the U.S. elections to count the votes. The software is made by communist Venezuelans that kept Chavez in power, the Maduro family in power. The, the, the communist software is being used on the, uh, the, the Canadian-owned voting machine to tabulate the votes in 28 states. Then after we vote, the votes are then sent to servers in Frankfurt, Germany. And then... Amazon, they're t- Amazon server. Amazon servers, the same Amazon that funded the models that predicted 2.2 million people might die of the Abdul Latif Jamil Institute, the same Amazon that banned my book, Fear Unmasked, for hate speech when you could still buy Mein Kampf, that Amazon. And so then the votes are stored in a server in Frankfurt, Germany, on Amazon servers. And then our votes are actually counted. Did you say our votes are then counted in Barcelona, Spain? Well, the votes, what happens is when they go into the Cytel server, that's where the manipulation is undertaken. Hmm. The Cytel servers report out to a company called Clarity. Clarity did the real-time reporting that you were seeing on television. 
that's why so many people caught instances on TV mm. where you had 560 votes for the Republican, all of a sudden dropped down 560, and 560 were added to the Democrat. That was when they did the vote flipping. What happened to them is they had to institute massive fraud on the paper ballot portion of the fraud because President Trump won by such a tremendous margin on the same-day, election day, in-person voting that they had to stop the count in several key states mm. so they could bring in truckloads of false, fake mail ballots, 100 and some odd thousand in Detroit, for example, where they're all for Biden, with nobody voting on the down ticket, and many of them in pristine condition, like I've seen in Georgia. Now, real quick, I want to make sure perfect, you... Perfect bubble dot. I want to make sure you get that. I want to make sure that I, people get this. When you say someone fails to vote down ballot and they only voted for Biden, what does that mean, sir? Well, for example, in Georgia, we had a, a number of candidates for U.S. Senate, two Senate races, and we had a lot of judgeships. We had state legislators, et cetera. So that's the down ballot vote, all the mm. election contests below the president and vice president. So the down ballot vote is taking place in many of these states. It's all going to have to be redone. Fortunately, our four founders, our founding fathers, were smart enough that we have an electoral college that will allow us to still elect President Trump in December. Uh, so we're going to have a president, even though Joe Biden is trying to give the false image that he's the president-elect. Mm. That's a media title. That's not a legitimate title. He'd get that if he got the electoral college vote. They're trying to set up a shadow government so that when some things happen in the near term, you're going to have confusion in the country, I believe. You're going to have a lot of problems in this country because the step two was to steal the election, give a shadow government some alleged authority from the media, and then have people in chaos not really sure who won the presidency, although Trump won it in a landslide historic election. Hmm. Because the bottom line is, the communists who have infiltrated our country by ideology, by corruption, by extortion. For the last 20 years, they've been infiltrating our government officials at the state, local, and national level, and they've decided some time ago that 2020 is when they're going to try to take over our country. So we're in the middle of a coup. It's going to look like a civil war, but it's a revolutionary war in disguise of a civil war. We're going to have some tough days ahead, in my view, but America's going to come out on top. If there's a communist behind every other tree, there's an American patriot behind every blade of grass. And the last time I counted at my house, there were more blades of grass than there were trees. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow a, a few listeners who um, are, uh, they love their country, they're going to be able to ask you questions because, you know, in the mainstream media, you don't allow normal people to ask questions. You only have pretty people with veneer teeth and these people that you know they're watching their calories they're not doing their research you know what i'm saying you got these pretty people on tv talking heads puppet people telling us things chris cuomo you know he spends 80 percent of his day lifting weights and then reading lines on the screen he doesn't actually have a job he doesn't actually do research he doesn't love our country so i would like normal people to have normal jobs to ask you real questions but before i do that you want to see and i know you do 18 pages of documented voter fraud. Um, and I would like for you to explain this here, uh, Lynn. There are many people giving an affidavit. Please explain the difference between what an affidavit and accusation is. And then I'll let Tim Redmond begin to interrogate you with a question there. So what's the difference between a signed sure. affidavit and an accusation? Well, an accusation is just that. It accuses you of some act. And in this instance, there have been accusations of voter fraud. An affidavit is evidence. An affidavit is sworn testimony. I know that in Georgia, in my case, we had 15 affidavits. If we'd had time, we could have gotten 15,000. There was voter fraud all over the state in connection with the recount. And a lot of people caught on to the problems with respect to the voting machine when they noticed things going odd on television the night of the election. So there's plenty of evidence. I've spoken at length with Sidney Powell. I don't represent the president, but I do consult with Sidney under a joint uh, common interest agreement because of my lawsuit in Georgia. Got it. I've seen sworn, I've seen sworn affidavits. 
I've seen sworn testimony by video. Oh, yeah. Of some of the individuals involved, particularly the people in Venezuela. Sidney Powell is telling the American public the truth. Yes, and she in is. time, she's going to file the lawsuits, and the American public's going to see it. But the problem is the media, which has been engaging in increasing censorship, has now almost censored it so that the people that know the truth are almost an echo chamber telling it to themselves. And they've blocked out the mass of other people in this country so that you don't hear about Sidney Powell on mainstream media and you don't get the word out to the people that most need to hear it right. about the truth. So we've got a propaganda tool of the Communist Party. Yep. That's our media. Plain and simple. You say they're pretty faces. They are. They're propagandists. And I would the say this. Look at, who owns the, look at who owns the media. Yep. You'll figure it out. It's communism. It's globalists like George Soros and, and, and Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. Yep. And there's an element of the military-industrial complex involved because they're trying to hide the amount of money that's missing from the Pentagon budget, and they want to keep that gravy train rolling. Joe Biden is a criminal. Will he go to jail? I believe that Barack Obama was a criminal. I believe that Hillary Clinton was a criminal. And sadly, I believe that George Bush 41 and 43 were also heads of criminal enterprises. It sounds outrageous, but I believe in time the American public is going to learn the truth. God says every lie will be revealed. Stay tuned. Wait on the Lord. Every lie is going to be revealed. Okay, Tim Redmond, uh, what question do you have for for a great the great American patriot and lawyer, Lynn Wood? Yeah, Mr. Wood, uh, I'm representing a lot of uh, folks out there that see hundreds of thousands of uh, ballots or just Biden only showing up weird hours of the night and. I just see you know 2,000 affidavits. I, I'm seeing all these facts here, but the press is very effective in that. And so how real is this case to do a body slam on these criminals and to get an accurate and correct election vote count going and, and their, uh, their criminal activities revealed? Well, let me say, let me say, let me preface this comment by saying that uh, it's not direct. I, I haven't addressed this issue with the president, but I I watch Donald Trump, uh, and I believe that Donald Trump is a genius. I met him on March the 11th when he asked me to come up to the White House. That was the day that the worldwide pandemic was declared. I spent a few minutes with him. I can tell you that Donald Trump is a man of God. He may not have been one coming into the White House, but he's a man of God now. He's found God. So I believe that Donald Trump, because I believe God named you in the disguise of your parents, Trump's last name is Trump. Trump's going to trump them all. Look back at the 2018 time period, and you'll see that President Trump entered an executive order with some severe sanctions. It addressed foreign interference with a national election. Mm -hmm. I think President Trump saw this coming. He's got the spirit of Elijah. That's why his middle name is John. I also believe his first name is Donald, by the way, for Donald's Bible that he was given by his mother. Donald was a young man that led a fiery revival in an island overseas. I think President Trump is going to trump him. I think on his time, when he feels like the country needs to know, I think there's going to be proof positive. You also should note that servers in, in, of Cytel were seized in Frankfurt a couple of three days ago. I believe those servers will show the actual vote. I believe that Donald Trump won somewhere around 80 million votes. I believe he also won 410 electoral votes. I think it was the largest landslide in American history. And they tried to steal it from him, but he won by so much, they had to cheat that much more. And when you're trying to do fraud at the last minute, you make mistakes. They made a lot of mistakes. They've been caught. The question now is, what yep. are they going to do? I'm afraid they're going to continue on the path to seize power in this country. So we're in for some tough days. Now, I will say this. Uh, the Dominion engineer, uh, this is a Dominion engineer by the name of Eric Coomer. Eric Coomer was posting on social media 
and I'm, I'm quoting, so I'm going to have to beat myself, but he says that he'd made sure that Trump wouldn't win on social media. And this is the programmer. So the, the, the devil, the Luciferians, they're really out. They're really showing their hand. If we go back to the Trump analogy, the Trump card. I mean, these guys are showing well, their hand. They're, they're, it's like Captain Obvious is working for these people at this point. Well, what, what you're going to find, I believe, again, based on, you know, you hear something here and there and you try to connect the dots. I think you're going to find in time that Obama and Biden used the same type of computer deal in Florida in the 2012 election. Hillary Clinton used it in 2016. That's why she was so sure she was going to win. Oh. But at that time, Trump won by so many votes that he beat the algorithm. If you had the real vote in 2016, I believe Donald Trump won the popular vote as well as a mass win in the Electoral College. They yes. used it again in 2018 to win the midterms in the House. Yep. But people weren't paying attention then. And then they added in 2020 the mail ballots. Now, why do we need mail ballots? What was the excuse? The excuse was COVID. I believe COVID was a biological weapon that derived out of China. I think it was designed to do many things, one of which was to influence people to vote by mail. They're trying to distance us. They're trying to isolate us. They're trying to scare us. The mask are a joke. I've studied the mask issue. The mask doesn't protect you from anything. If God thought we, our immune system needed a mask, he would have created us with a mask. It's that simple. Now, uh, real quick, I, we're not here to talk about this, but I can't. I, Any time that I can share truth, I can't, I can't hold back. But the actual Wuhan lab that is the epicenter of the China virus, that very laboratory, if you look it up right now, just type into Google, Dr. Fauci backed the controversial Wuhan lab with US, U.S. dollars. So the very research that President Trump banned, which is research involving fetal tissue, that's called gain-of-function research, the very man who was doing that research is Dr. Fauci, and the very research that causes the creation of a pandemic is gain-of-function research. And I quote from Newsweek, many scientists have criticized, have criticized gain-of-function research, which involves manipulating viruses in the lab to explore their potential for infecting humans because it creates the risk of starting a pandemic. Mm. And so the I, very I, I call I call Fauci on my Twitter page. I call him Fauci and Frog Fauci. Yes. And I think I, I believe I, I believe that God controls everything. He created everything and he controls everything. He's... And I believe also that God has a sense of humor. And I think God gave us a pretty good preview of what Fauci was when he let him throw that baseball out of that pitch, and he almost well, damn well threw it in the dugout. Yeah. That's his most accurate threw, pitch of all time Fauci, so far. I mean, he shouldn't shut down the ball. You, should, you, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't wear a mask. You don't need to wear a mask. you got to wear a mask. with the globalists. Un the globalists like Bill Gates, they want to take over the world, one world government, that's source, the, the big reset. They want to take it over and develop it where there's a ruling elite, and then there's a subservient working class. Sounds like communism too, doesn't it? And what you're saying is 100% true, and it's all cited at timetofreeamerica.com, timetofreeamerica.com. Everything you said about the Great Reset, it's there. Al Gore is excited about the Great Reset. The communists are excited about the Great Reset. George Soros is excited about the Great Reset. AOC is excited about the Great Reset. We are not excited about the Great Reset, which is why we have many guests on today's show. Now, Steve Hunter is a station director uh, for Griffin Communications. So Steve decides, uh, like Charlie Kirk, I think you guys like, made the decision just, to start airing the Charlie Kirk show. Yep. And we just interviewed Charlie yesterday. Charlie and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let you ask uh, your question, Mr. Steve Hunter, for Mr. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn Wood there. Mr. Wood, uh, you're right in the middle of Georgia. You're in Atlanta. What are the, what, what's the process that you guys are going through trying to get a recount on the votes? And how does that compare to what's going on in Arizona, what's going on in Michigan? And how do you also keep your, your people focused every day and, and going and, and fighting the fight? Well, let me go to the last question first. I think it's tough. I think I, I, I sense uh, from Twitter and Paula that, that there's a, a growing sense of, of weariness in the country. It's been one heck of a year. And now they're facing all this confusion about the election. But I, I, I believe that people are going to, over the next few weeks, realize that the only person that can save us is not a person on earth, but the only thing that's going to save us is faith in God. God's going to save us. But in terms of the real world, which is a lie, the real world, you still have to work hard, and we're working hard in Georgia. We did to try to get a legitimate recount where they would 
pull out and distinguish between the valid and the invalid votes. But our governor and our secretary of state, they didn't do that. All they did was to recount the same invalid votes. The governor of Georgia is corrupt with Chinese money. That's not an accusation. Alone, I have evidence to show it. The secretary of state in Georgia, these two Republicans, the governor and the secretary of state, Brad Rassenberger, is corrupted by Chinese money. When you take their money, they own you. And so they're not supporting President Trump. They're not supporting the people of Georgia that voted overwhelmingly for President Trump. There's going to be a day of reckoning for Brian Kemp. There's going to be a day of reckoning for Brad Rassenberger. Both of those individuals will face that reckoning on earth. We'll see what happens to them when the time comes that they face God and they come to final judgment. That's only God knows what he'll do with them. When I, the way I heard it is it was like a lot of Democrats would be exposed and then also a lot of Republicans. So it seemed like there's mass corruption on both sides. Would you agree with that? Is that how you interpreted the Kim Clement prophecies or just based off of the evidence you're seeing? Well, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think there's almost as much corruption in the Republican Party as there oh. is in the Democrat. And I've, and I've seen it firsthand in Georgia in the last two weeks. I agree with that, sir. Okay, now I'm going to pass the mic over here to another uh, listener here. We have uh, three more as you're kind of pacing yourself, and I appreciate you jo- joining us here. Uh, we have a man by the name of Jordan, and Jordan has a – he owns a manufacturing company. What question do you have, Jordan? Well, my question uh, – sorry if I've already touched this or if you guys have already went, went over this – um, is with um, the, the mass censorship going on, um, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, um, if you're the average American watching the average broadcasting stations and they are telling us who our president already is, does that mean that that is actual factual uh, statement or is that an opinion? Um, can you tell us when we will actually know who the real president of the American uh, it will be? I can tell you that the statements that Joe Biden is the president-elect can be described in one word, lie. It's a <laughs> lie they're trying to sell to the public yep. to try to think it's true. There's only one way and one way only that you can become the president-elect. You can become the president-elect before the Electoral College votes, but that requires a concession of defeat by the party that you ran against. Donald Trump is not going to concede He's never going to concede an election that he knows he won overwhelmingly. The only other way you can become the president-elect is if you are voted on by the Electoral College, and then between December the 14th and when you're sworn in on January the 20th, you are the president-elect. So the mainstream media, the propagandists, are trying to sell the public a lie to make them think it's true that he's the president-elect. He's not. That's the truth. So if people could just be honest with one another and remember that we are different, but we are more similar than we are different and focus on our similarities and not focus on our differences, we'd be a lot better place to live in, even though we'd still be imperfect. What they tried to do in the last several months is they tried to divide us. They tried to emphasize our differences. Right. If you focus on the differences, you will divide us. United we stand divided we fall that's why they've been trying to divide us they've been trying to tell us if you defend yourself you'll go to jail they've been telling us don't rely on the cops even police officers acting appropriately have been charged with crime correct they're trying to keep the country from defending itself because they are coming to get us and we've got to defend ourselves in order to defend our country it's that simple there's a spirit of lasciviousness going on. I mean, people are being told that you're somehow a bad person if you believe that a marriage is defined as a man and a woman woman coming together. Uh, people are being told that you're a bigot, you're a horrible person if you believe in Christ. You're being told you can't go to church. You're being told if you you can't sing at church if you do go. You're being told you got to stand six feet apart. You got to have a mask. You got to wear all the time. If you don't wear a mask, you're somehow putting other people at risk. What was what is up is down. Down is up. Truth is being shared and and communicated by the mainstream media as being false. What is false is being called to be true. And uh, when when, when you live in a world like that, you want to surround yourself with people that um, go to the Bible for the truth. And so I wanted to introduce you here, our final two uh, guests. This is Stan Suttles. Uh, Sir, you are a Bible-believing, literal Bible-believing Christian out there. You want to get to the truth. What question would you have for uh, Attorney Lynn Wood? 
Mr. Wood, uh, I understand today that there, the Supreme Court uh, assigned court circuits today, or Supreme Court circuit assignments were made. If so, that. did you? How do you view that? Uh, I, I took a look at the list. Of course, the first thing I looked at was the Eleventh Circuit because that's where I practice law in, in, in terms of Georgia, and I was pleased to see that Clarence Thomas was uh, assigned to our circuit. I think there's a lot of things going on right now that people uh, are not going to recognize without the use of discernment. So they'll understand more than what just they see at first glance. Hmm. So the Supreme Court's being aligned. The Department of Defense was recently realigned by the president. Take a look at who he put in place, cyber terrorism and a terrorism expert. As I said, look at what he did in 2018 with the executive order to deal with foreign interference in our national elections. I think, listen, in a perfect world, uh, I'd like to see John Durham's report come out and people go to jail. I'd oh, like please. to see the truth told yes. by Jeffrey Epstein and Gillian Maxwell, and I'd like for a lot of people to go to jail. Yes. I'd like to see what's on Hunter Biden's laptop. I'd like to see those people go to jail. Yes. I'd like to see what's on... Um, on Anthony Weiner's laptop, I'd like to see a lot of people go to jail. And then when we get to the final phase of the election fraud, I'd like to see a lot more people go to jail. The one thing I will say, there'll be an intermingling. There'll be people going to jail, I believe, who are involved in all of those or some of those same uh, investigations. So there is potentially a great awakening. The truth has to come out. Yes. I believe it will. I, I, I do not think that you can hide the truth. I do say it, and I believe it. Every lie will be revealed. This country is going to be shocked when it learns the truth about who's been occupying the Oval Office for some periods of years. They're going to be shocked at the level of pedophilia. They're going to be shocked at what I believe will be a revelation in terms of people who actually engage in satanic worship. And just so we're clear, because what you just said is a little bit out there, but all documented. They've been rewriting the school curriculum for the last decade or two. Yes. They've been trying to change our history. Yes. They've been trying to change the way young people are influenced by school. Communists are always in the academic world. And they try to, to train these kids through the educational system to believe the lie. They're not getting the truth about the history of our country. They're not getting the truth that our country was founded by people who were divinely inspired. God bless all of y'all. you got to keep getting the message out so that the people that are being deprived of the truth can learn the truth. I shall Remember do it, what sir. what God said, John 321, I believe, he that doeth the truth cometh to the light. Truth is the way to live. God is truth. Truth is God. God is real. Thank you for letting me be on your show, and God bless all of you. You still have a lot of proud American patriots that showed up here to the state capitol because they see and they believe that the election is being stolen from them. They believe that there's no transparency. Like why, if, if Joe Biden is, if Joe Biden won this election fair and square, you would think the Democrats out of everybody would want the most transparency possible. That way they could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that their guy won, that their guy flipped the state of Georgia blue from red when it hasn't voted blue since the 90s since bill clinton probably even though barack obama couldn't win georgia somehow the 80 year old guy who doesn't speak english and campaigned from his basement miraculously flipped a republican stronghold to blue i just it's it baffles me but hey maybe the truth is stranger than fiction right What's your thoughts on everything? Trump 2020. Hey, he's got the message right there. Trump 2020. How about you? Trump, Trump 2020. I'd say Trump 2020, 24.